Well, hello, all walk-off listeners. Thanks so much for joining us. We figured we'd do a little uh, extra work here, put in some overtime. Adam and I decided that we would do what we're calling Rated J. And so we've each divvied up five Toronto Blue Jays each. And now that we are sitting here, first week of May, well, I guess we're going into the second week of May here, I think we've got a pretty good idea of how guys have done to date, and we are going to fill you in on what we think. So, I'll go first. Okay. George Springer. F. <laughs> uh, F. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I was going to be optimistic when I picked Springer. I can't be. Yeah. He played two games in April. He didn't hand in enough homework for me to give him anything but an F. That's fair. That's it. Now, you obviously feel he's going to pick up this F. Yes, of like course. He's playing. Yes, he's of course. I mean, he's going to yeah. do the homework and he's going to catch up on missed assignments. And absolutely. But as of today, report card number one, he's getting an F. I, okay. There's no way I can give him anything except that. Okay. Well, for the first guy I'm rating... I went with David Phelps. Now, he just was put on the IL like two days ago with a lat strain. He's going to be out for two to three weeks, it looks like, which is a real bummer because the guy, I'm grading him, he's got an A-. minus. The guy has been phenomenal mm -hmm. at the back end of this bullpen, especially when you think about the fact that Kirby Yates was out for the season. Julian Merriweather is still injured. Jordan Romano hit the IL. Tyler Chatwood hit the IL. And they were really relying on him. Charlie was going to him in very high leverage situations. And I mean, if you look at his numbers, they speak for themselves. The 0 0.87 ERA over 10 and in 0.1 innings. He has dominated against right-handed hitters. A minus. Oh, that's fair. Uh, I'm going to stick with the bullpen, too. Friend of the show, Tim Meza. Yes. He's getting an A for me. He's got a 10 games, 6 and one-thirds inning through April. Zero ERA. Wow. Z which he's continued to keep up into May. Yeah. Zero ERA. The only reason I didn't give him an A+, plus is that it's been ugly. Yeah, he has uh, at times... He's struggled with control. He's had quite a few base runners, but he's always managed to pitch himself out of it. I can't give him anything less than an A. Love it. Love to see it. Yeah. I mean, an A for Tim Meza, I think, is more than fair. I hope he keeps it up all season long. Again, friend of the show, Tim Meza. We had a great chat with him at the start of the season. That's on our YouTube, the Walk Off Podcast. You can still check that out. Yeah. All right, now we're going to our saving son, our our prodigal son, I guess, is <laughs> the word I'm looking for here. Yeah. But Vladimir Guerrero Jr., I'm not even going to start telling you why, A+. Plus. A plus. The guy's been A+. Plus. I mean, he's he's been at the plate 103 times, so 103 at-bats. He's fifth in average with a 330 average. He's got seven home runs. He's fourth in walks with 23 walks. He has more walks than strikeouts, 23 to 22. He has an OPS. He's third in the league in OPS with 1.057, so over 1,000 OPS, 22 RBIs to date. A+. Plus. <laughs> you don't even have to have like watched baseball to know that he's an A-plus this season. Like, Yeah. He's no. been phenomenal. Absolutely. Well, I got an A-plus for you as well. Santiago Espinal. Ah, interesting. A plus. Uh, small sample size for Santiago Espinal. Um, he's only played in, I think, 10 games to date. 350 batting average. And defensively, he's been our best third baseman. Better wow. than Biggio, better than Panic. You know, the only thing that he's missing is more more of a workload. So yeah, I think he's going to get it as the season goes on. I th but, I mean, he's hit. He's looked amazing offensively. De or, sorry, defensively. 
Mm-hmm. Like his glove has been great. He's the only one from the left side of the field that consistently throws without hitting the dirt. Mm-hmm. A plus. And I know we're each rating a guy, but I did wish to step in here for Espinal and just mention also that it's very impressive his mental acumen with the ability to be a yo-yo up and down, which he has. He's appeared in the big leagues three different times now and been sent back down. It looks like he's sticking now in the in the bench, which is great news for him, but just phenomenal job on his part to be that guy and live with the uncertainty and still perform. Lourdes Gurriel Jr., I've got him ranked at a D-plus he has 100 at bats and he has struggled this year. 220 is his batting average. He's only got two home runs and he's a man with a lot of power. He's only got nine RBIs. He's looked a little bit better lately. He seems to be finding his swing, but to date, as it is right now, May 7th, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., D. Okay. Um, I'm going to pivot then. From Guriel. What was Guriel's batting average? 220. 220. I'm going to Kevin Biggio. Mm-hmm. Batting average 185. Mm-hmm. I got to give him a C plus. I like that. So following your ranking of Guriel, it's like, wow, if he's hitting worse, he's still committing errors, right? Like it hasn't been... Pleasant to watch him throw from third, even field the ball from third. 185 batting average. He hasn't been getting the walks like he did last year, or like he has nope. throughout his career. I still give him a C plus because he doesn't he's not a third baseman. I I keep giving him the benefit of the doubt on that. Like mm-hmm. this is the this is the comparison for me. Sunday nights, I go to take my daughter home. Right, eight thirty, gotta be at her mom's. Drop her off for bedtime for school the next day. So eight twenty, she's still dawdling in her room getting ready. I'm like, we gotta go. If you're not ready in the next two minutes, I'm leaving without you. You know what she says? She goes, "What's the point?" <laughs> and she's right. <laughs> like, yeah, go ahead, Dad, leave without me. What are you gonna do when you get to my mom's yeah. without me? <laughs> right? And I just feel like that's the thing with Cabin Biggio is like. You could struggle at third base. What are we going to do? Like, yeah, I, Kevin just looks at them and like, yeah, I don't want to play third base either. Are you going to yeah. take me off a of third? I, That's fine. I don't want to be here. Like I'm doing you a favor. For sure. And that is something that we've brought up a few times with Kevin. It wasn't his choice to play third base, a position that he had zero experience yeah. at so we have, to start this season. We have no leg to stand on in terms of criticizing his abilities at third is, I guess, my point. So. C plus for Cavan. I think maybe he's got a little bit of an injury in his hand. I think he's going to turn. He's going to be just fine this season. I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I think I think he's fine, and I think we are starting to see that he has been putting the bat on the ball much better. That Oakland series, he had a couple multi-hit games. Yeah. He's he's pulling out yeah. of it, and he's he's taking more balls, which is what he's always done. So yeah. it's good to see. He'll I be like fine. C plus as his rating. Okay. All right, let's pivot and go back to pitching here. Robbie Ray, what a, I don't want to overstate it, but I like godsend might be too much of a word. Okay. You know, it might be too strong, but <laughs> he is really, thank goodness for Robbie Ray in this starting rotation. He did miss a couple weeks to start the season, but has looked really good since. Um he had a few games. I know there was a game in Kansas City where it was an ugly, ugly start and still managed to not give up a run and pitch five innings, which is something that you got to give the man credit for. He has been incredible when it comes to throwing a fastball this year. He probably has the best fastball of his career right now at 29 years old. He's locating it well. He's moving it up and down in the zone. He's pitching it side to side. He's picking corners. He is doing a great job of showing the off-speed pitch and then coming in high and hard. He's been great, and I give him a B. I think he's been a solid B in this rotation. All right. He has a two point or a 3.14 ERA in 28 innings pitched, 29 strikeouts. He's been great. Love it. I don't have any argument there. 
Um, Danny Jansen is the last J that I'm grading today. Now with, I'm really curious about this. One. I actually, <laughs> I'm really curious where you go with this. So with George Springer, I told you, I expected to give him a better grade than an F, right? Couldn't do it. With Danny Jansen, everybody who's ever watched any one of our live streams, listened to any of our podcasts, know exactly how I feel about Danny Jansen. Not a fan. I, not a fan. <laughs> and I, I really wanted to give him a worse grade than I did. I gave him a C minus. Yeah, I, I really respect that. Zero four four for a batting average. O for seven throwing out base runners. Like people just run on him at will, mm -hmm. which is interesting because he hasn't been a bad catcher like that in his career no zero pass balls is a big deal right he's he's back there he stops everything in the dirt whatever he's he's a good defender behind the plate and i do wish to just jump in for yes. one second here with a stat okay. that blew me away when i heard it and that is in the last year and a half there's been 122 balls in the dirt thrown to danny jansen 121 of them he has blocked just to kind of reiterate what you were saying like that's phenomenal that's the best in the league by the way and i you told me that stat during our last live stream and that may have been a factor in him getting a c minus was mm -hmm. i don't think i appreciated that as much as should be well, when appreciated I saw the stat, when i saw the stat i started noticing it more too because when it's brought up to you you're like oh he is blocking a lot of stuff in the yeah. dirt so that helps him. Um, he is still giving it his gosh darn all on the field. There's something to be said for that. We saw Vladdy struggle last year defensively, and it was so frustrating to watch his attitude on looked, the field. He looked numb. He looked numb. He just didn't care. He was dropping fly balls and foul territory and just kind of like shrugging it off like oh well like whatever right danny jansen is not playing like that and kudos to him like he'll yeah. get he'll get out of this slump eventually you know he'll get his batting average back up into the triple digits yeah and i mean the truth is man he might only be a 170 hitter and that is going to be what cripples his career because yeah. He defensively he calls a good phenomenal. game. Yep. He hasn't had an easy time. Like how many pitch? How many different pitchers has he caught this year? Between mm -hmm. the bullpen and the pitching staff and the starting rotation, like oh, it's been a revolving door with all the injuries. Absolutely. So he has not had an easy time. You know, if his batting average wasn't point oh four four, yeah. he would have gotten better than a C minus. Yeah. No, I, I respect that rating, and I'm glad I, – because I would have argued with you. If you gave him an F or a D-, minus, I would have been like, come on. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, that's a great rating. All right, let's end on a high note here. Okay. My final guy to grade, also back in the bullpen, which has been just such a, a point of strength for this Blue Jays team, Rafael Dolis. I rant about this guy all the time, <laughs> so I won't go too into details, but this is a man that has been incredible in high leverage situations for Charlie Montoya on this Toronto Blue Jays team, especially with all the injuries. He's got an ERA at 2.84, and we've brought this up before. April 4th, he allowed four runs in that seventh inning, and those are pretty much all that – his entire ERA is pretty much that inning. He has been lights out since then. He's pitched 12.2 innings, and these have not been low leverage innings. These have been high stress, men on base, bringing in in the middle of the inning type of innings. Charlie goes to him when he feels the heat, you know, when yep. there, when there's a stressful situation on the diamond, guess who's coming out of that bullpen. It's Rafael Dolis. And he might even be an a plus, like I'm going to say a here, but the truth is the guy has found a way to get out when a lot of other pitchers wouldn't have. And, no, I love it, and I, I think you're he's right. He's doing it for a million bucks, Adam. <laughs> like, he's doing it for a million dollars. He's <laughs> he's the best pitcher in this bullpen for $1 million that they got him out of Japan off the scrap heap. 
incredible scouting, incredible job on his part to come back into the MLB after four years in Japan and dominate, find yeah. it. Yeah, good so, for him. Yeah. No, I hey. love it. I love Dolis. Hate watching him pitch, but I'm glad he's on our <laughs> yeah. team. Yes. All right, man. Well, there's our grade yeah. the Jays for the month of April. Yeah, and we're going to try and do this every month. So let us know in the comments what you think. If any of our ratings are way out to lunch, feel free to tell us. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you.